Today we're going to be tackling my nemesis here. This giant dent. Just get a few shots from the dent's perspective so you can understand the extent of the damage here that we're going to be trying to uh, rough out. Now this has already been repaired. See there's filler cracking so there's kind of uh, we're kind of limited as to how far we're gonna take this. Uh, there's also a, kind of a box side in the way here, but uh, I just, uh, I'm growing weary of staring at this unsightly blemish on what is otherwise a pristine all original truck. So that's the plan. Let's grab our implements of destruction and begin. I'm just going to start out trying to get this moving in the right direction. So I'm going to uh, use a, uh, a path of least resistance here, start out with a rubber mallet and uh, then move on to kind of a, a dolly type situation like this. Just get it uh, bumped out and uh, you know it's really a shame because uh, if it wasn't for all the horrific collision damage and rust on this truck it would be absolutely pristine. This was fairly uh, light, lightly creased, but there's a lot of damage kind of knotted up in here. So the rubber mallet is, is just not cutting it. Uh, whatever happened kind of pushed everything in and then pushed up this area here. Uh, so I'm trying to kind of relieve these two areas here. Uh, but again, the, the rubber mallet is it's kind of, uh, I don't have enough leverage with it so we're going to go a little more aggressive here and i'm going to use this dolly the end of this dolly and i'm going to hit it from the back and try to bump this up a little better a bunch of previous collision damage in the center here that was previously filled over and then the filler cracked out and so that's all gonna have to that's kind of fighting us now so we're trying to fix damage from the initial impact and then that was repaired improperly and now we're repairing another dent on top of that so uh, just the way things go with these old cars or trucks or whatever the thing is. Uh, I would 
issue that we're having is the wrong side is in the way. Got a high side right here. And I want to bring that here. quick look here to see what we're fighting against. Now all this is just standard procedure, but you can see we still got this high spot right here, which is directly under this bed rail. So obviously uh, the logical thing to do would be to take this off, or sorry, take the fender off, uh, but I'm just not that committed to this project yet. So I'm just gonna keep trying to waste time fighting with it. The second issue that we're having is all of this this knotted up uh, Saskatchewan mountain range here. This is all previous damage that was just filled over from another collision and so now that's all we all kind of have to correct this as we're going because we don't want to if we just keep hammering up on it uh, we're just going to overstretch the area which uh, is obviously undesirable um, so i got to kind of factor that into the equation here as well but i just wanted to give you a little bit of a closer look at what's going on here i'm going to get that to hammering now i'm going to kind of focus on uh getting some of this nightmare ironed out before I worry about this. Uh, this is, uh, is going to be our biggest issue going forwards, I think. Uh, it's not uh, years of uh, neglect that uh, uh, causes damage, uh, it's people. People cause way more damage. So this previous uh, repair here is, uh, is really holding us up. getting real boring so uh, let's just do our uh, license plate draw for the patrons right now we will uh, do our other license plate draw the second one at the uh, end of the video so this is for the uh, Saskatchewan uh, freedom plate uh, off my 1960 Apache and we now have and we now have uh, 37 patrons, which is really cool. Uh, they're kind of ultimately responsible for uh, keeping the show going. So a uh, huge thank you to all of them. Anyways, uh, we got 37 of them. So I was able to write down all their names on pieces of paper and uh, put them in the hat here. Now I haven't had to do that much handwriting since the last uh, three years of grade seven. So it's quite a project. Anyways, we got 37 names in a hat here. Just gonna shake them up and uh, reach in here and see uh, see which one we got. I, I won't even look because I might. Uh, you know, we want to keep everybody honest here. Come on. Okay. All right. Let's see who it is. 
Prairie Viking. Cool. Just one yourself. Saskatchewan license plate. I'll uh, send you a personal message on Patreon and get your uh, info and then we'll get that uh, sent out to you. Thank you so much for being a patron and supporting the show. And, uh, you know, I can give back with uh, useless content and useless prizes. So, always a good day. Don't worry, I'm going to burn all the evidence. I'm pushing up from the backside with the dolly right in this this creased area and as I'm pushing up I'm hammering down on the high spots around it I'm trying to level it all out and then as I go I'll continue to bump things up with the dolly if I just use the dolly for bumping everything up then I'll just create a huge mound here which I don't want to do so I'm trying to kind of iron everything out while at the same time I bring the metal up to where it has to be
this is starting to iron out okay. But now we're kind of back to this problem here. We still have a creaser here. We still have a high spot at the end. So we're going to try to get that figured out now. I kind of got the basic shape back here now. Uh, very roughed in, but it's kind of the worst of it out for sure. And the problem now is uh, there's all this filler in here and it's just kind of affecting how much further we can go. And we're not trying to get this uh, totally straight right now. We're just trying to make it less obnoxious. Um, so I think what I'm going to have to do is just strip away some of the filler in this area and then I can just do a little better job of uh, getting this straightened out. Uh, not really what I want to do, but I guess we don't really have much of a choice. I sanded that down uh, and you know it's fairly evident that this entire fender is just multiple layers of bad repairs, old repairs, not necessarily bad repairs but just old repairs. You see there's like a repair there and then it's wrecked again and then they use different filler on it and it's all over top of paint and just layers and layers of disappointment. So I'm not stripping this whole thing down. Just, uh, it ain't happening, so I'm just gonna uh, get this smooth out uh, the best that I care to, and that's gonna be that. I'm not, uh, the only way to get this 100% would be to work the whole fender, and I'm not working over the whole fender. So, I'll just uh, finish up here, and uh, that'll be that.
Okay, well, that's as far as I care to take that. Uh, we're just starting to get into the rest of this old bodywork here. And next thing you know, we're going to have this whole fender stripped. And I'm going to be spending uh, 40 hours fixing a uh, fender that you can buy for 800 bucks. So, uh, just going to call it there. Um, if I was uh, doing a full restoration on this obviously all this old filler will come off would have to come off but in this case i'm just fixing all the major damage on this and uh, i kind of like the old farm truck uh, thing it's got going on so um we're just going to kind of work around that i'll probably just uh, feather this out a bit and then just uh, maybe refill that area or whatever or just blend it in and Stick on some red oxide or something to kind of make it not stand out so much. Obviously not uh, not perfect by any means. Uh, this is uh, just an overview of what we use for tools. We started out with our least aggressive rubber mallet method. And we just used uh, one of these general purpose uh, dollies. I, I use mostly this edge, a little bit of this edge. Regular old uh, hammer. Uh, body spoon, I use this as a slapper when I've got like a, a ridge going around a dent or just any kind of damage like that. It's a wider contact surface than the hammer. So it works just the same as a hammer. It's just a wider contact surface. Works really good for ridges and, and things like that in the metal. Ironing that out. Uh, this is just an old worn out file and the handle fell off so I taped it back on with hockey tape and it kind of gives that spring effect and I also use this as a slapper um, if you want to it's kind of handy because it leaves kind of a little uh, kind of a little uh, imprint or whatever on the metal which is easily sanded away afterwards but it kind of tells you where your high and low spots are and the actual teeth from the file they do help to kind of grab and pull in any uh, minor high spots um, if you do want to get one of these for yourself, I would recommend getting a wider one and then putting like a, uh, curved handle on it because this is kind of limited. I do like the slapper action with hockey tape on there, but it would be beneficial if it was wider and had a better handle on it. But I'm not into, uh, buying or, uh, making tools. I just use whatever I've got laying around. This was broken, so I made it into... Well, I didn't even make it into anything. I just started using it as a slapper. So that's the story there. And then we've just got a bullseye pick. This I just use for picking up smaller low spots and small creases and stuff. Stuff that is harder to get out with the, just the regular hammer and dolly. Just, uh, and I don't really like the sharp point that these come with. So I just dulled off the tip. And you can kind of see that. Give you a, this one's extremely worn out. I need to get a new one, but uh, it kind of is just an accurate way of bringing up low spots. So there's our tool overview. Uh, regular viewers have already seen this about a million times, but well, it's time to give away our other Saskatchewan license plate for our uh, regular YouTube audience. So let's see if we can figure this out here. Um, we're on the old computer hopefully it doesn't uh, fail on us we got our cats next to us supervising things I, I did a google search and this is the first thing that came up so I can only assume it's legitimate uh, enter youtube video url blah blah blah, blah. Okay. this is all very exciting Hey, we entered our URL. What the hell is this? What's this all about? Filter duplicate users. I think somebody was mentioned something about that. Yes. Good replies to comments. No. Filter comments. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's all a lot of reading. Animation. Oh, there's an animation. Three plus two. You're making me do math now. Wow. K. 
get YouTube comments. 231 comments. Hey. Now what? Hey. Oh, hey. It's Ken. Good stuff. Uh, Snow King 55. Uh, he's uh, actually been one of my subscribers since uh, just about uh, day one. Uh, he's building a 36 Chevy truck and he's documenting it on his YouTube channel. So, uh, funny how that works. Anyways, Ken, uh, you got yourself a Saskatchewan license plate, I guess. Um, let's see what he had to say. Fenders look great, Kyle. A lot of hours go into refurbishing old tin, but when you can't buy replacements, you have to fix what you have. Great lead work too. Look forward to the 48 work. Well, so do I. I guess we're working on it now, actually. Anyways, Ken, uh, send me uh, an email. Uh, Carter Auto Restyling at Hotmail.com. I'll put a little thing in the video here. Um, that's not my actual email for the rest of you. That is that's just something I just made up for the channel. Um, so... You know, if you want to send me a bunch of messages uh, with your full life story and whatever, I'm probably never going to see it again because I just made it specifically for this this giveaway here. So, anyways, uh, Ken, send me an email. Uh, I'll get your info and I'll get you this uh, fancy license plate mailed out to you. And hope everything's going good with you. And uh, hope 36 is uh, progressing nicely. I look, always look forward to more progress on that. So. Yeah, thanks to the rest of you for all your nice comments on the video and uh, and for watching, obviously.